Hi, it's Miss Lamb again. To get ourselves ready to dive into literary theory and criticism, we first need to establish two big ideas that will frame the remainder of this course. The first one is ideology. What is an ideology? According to Stephen Bonnycastle, an ideology is a system of thought or a worldview which an individual acquires from the world around him. An ideology determines what you think is important in life, what categories you put people into, and a whole host of other things. A helpful analogy is to think about wearing sunglasses or even 3D glasses. They don't change anything about the object we're seeing. They just change how we see it. Each ideology draws attention to certain features of the world and hides or causes you to ignore others. The effects and strength of ideology are most visible when it comes to religion. As a Jewish person, my ideology includes a belief in one God who controls the world. If I came in contact with a person who believes in Hinduism, he simply wouldn't assume that monotheism is true. If I lived during the Spanish Inquisition, I might have to give up my life if I wasn't willing to give up my ideology. Ideologies often come in conflict with each other when parties can't agree on what the facts are. These conflicts are usually accompanied by strong feelings of anger and frustration. Take the current election, for example. Sorry. Now that I hope you understand what an ideology is, it's time for our biggest question. Why should I care? How does knowing about ideologies help me become a better reader or a better person? Of course, the answer is not so simple. Once you become aware of the existence of ideologies and how they influence the way people think about the world, you can see that your knowledge about the world is not absolute truth. Everything you know is relative to the ideology you are using. You cannot expect someone with a different ideology to agree with your set of knowledge. This is because you cannot look at the world except through an ideology, but your ideology also creates the world you live in. I'll repeat that. You cannot look at the world except through an ideology, but your ideology also creates the world you live in. Recognizing the existence of ideologies has a fundamental effect on the way a person engages in dialogue. There are basically two possibilities. Either you share an ideology or there is an ideological conflict between you. When you share an ideology, you can move much more quickly. You can more accurately predict what the other will say, and you can count on your ideas being accepted. If you sense a difference in ideology, an ideological conflict between you and the other person, you have to be much more care tentative, careful, and open. You have to listen extremely carefully to what the other person is saying because you can't assume that they are experiencing the world the way you do. You have to make a much greater effort to get into the other person's world and feel what it's like. You have to expect that the other person's truth may not be valid for you. Thinking about ideology in reference to literature introduces a lot of uncertainty. It raises the question, what knowledge is most worth having? No one has found a satisfactory answer to this question, not even the experts. You might not like this question. You might want the truth. You might want me or your other teachers to answer, what does this mean, really? Unfortunately, the meaning simply isn't available. There are many meanings, and the one you find will depend partly on the ideology you start with. This might sound complicated and overwhelming. Give it some time to sit in your head until you get used to it. The absence of one absolute meaning allows you to take a central role in the struggle for power between different ideologies. Even more importantly, it empowers you to discover your own ideology and uncover your hidden assumptions. Why study literary theory? Literary theory gets us under the hood of a book. It helps us understand the process of finding meaning in a text. It raises issues that are often left hidden in literature courses. It asks questions like, what makes great literature great? And who decides what text gets to mean? Socrates said, the unexamined life is not worth living. Literary theory at its best helps us realize what we are really doing when we study literature. Let's review. One, an ideology is a way 
of looking at the world. It's based on our upbringing and experience and establishes how we perceive the things around us. Two, everything you know is relative to your ideology. People with different ideologies will see two different worlds with two very different versions of the truth. Three, there are no absolute truth or meaning or liter in literature. If ideology determines knowledge, then it is clear that meaning, especially in literature, is based on ideology and is not an absolute or a given. Four, literary theory helps us to understand the process of finding meaning in a text. Studying literary theory is a little like clothing shopping. You try on something new, see how it makes you look, makes you feel. If it doesn't fit, you hang it back up. If it does, you take it home, maybe alter it a bit so it fits you just right, and take joy in your new purchase. Take some time to think about these ideas. It's a lot. Maybe even watch this video a second time. Then come back for the final piece before you begin studying the theories themselves.